should have a periodic table. You should have your iron sheet. You should have your solubility rules. Jacqueline's even you. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, now? Oh, come on. Thank you. <sighs> Where is everybody anyway? <sighs> yes, ma'am. Way to be on it. Slogan's the Bert Whistle, Bloom, Kale, Amani. Oh, there's a swimming thing, huh? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, that's where people went. All right, so yeah, I definitely need to have this recorded. I guess you have to do it at 1 o'clock, and it's really inconvenient. We're still doing school. All right. There we go. So this, this periodic table, whichever one of your choice, and we're going to get rocking and rolling here so we can understand what the problem asked you to do yesterday. A lot of people had some difficulty with that. It's okay. So um, number eight, I gave you an online version, like I said, because uh, the one in your packet only had three columns when I transferred it from Microsoft to Google. I didn't make the right boxes. Anyway, I have the right boxes on this paper that was put in. So if you did it on line yesterday, like I asked you to, that's great. Um, just write on the front of your brownie packet by your name, number eight online. That would help me a lot when I'm grading. Um, we're gonna go over this first and then we're gonna work through problem nine, 10 and 11 and um, if there's time, we'll get to kinetic molecular theory. I haven't gotten to it except for first period. I have confidence in you. You guys are brainiacs. So that's my plan, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, doke. So the uh, problem was you get some magnesium. Erg. Whatever. You get some magnesium going with some aluminum sulfate and I gave you the formula for aluminum sulfate. You're welcome. Okay, so you didn't have to figure that one out on your own, but you should be able to. And we'll talk about that in a second. And then you're supposed to predict what's going to form. So a couple things you needed to be able to do, hopefully you can do this, is understand that magnesium is a what kind of element? Metal or non-metal? Metal. And so metals are on the left hand side of the periodic table. They lose their valence electrons. Magnesium's in group two. That means it has two valence electrons. It's going to lose both of them. Its charge is. Bless you. Yep. This is a compound, right? More than one element. How can you tell? More than one capital letter. There's actually three elements, but there's actually. 17 atoms in this one compound, two aluminums, three sulfurs, 12 oxygens. Aluminum is at the front because positive cations go at the front, negative anions go at the back. So I know aluminum is my metal. You know aluminum is a metal anyway. It's in group 3A or 13. What's its charge going to be? Can't remember, find it on here. Three means it has three valence electrons, right? 13 has three valence electrons. So it's going to lose all three of them and get a plus three. plus three. And since there's two aluminums, the total lost electrons are six, okay? Giving you a plus six. Now, some of you may recognize this from our Nick the Camel Ate a Clam for Supper in Phoenix thing. You may have forgotten it by now. You don't have to know the name and you don't have to remember the charge because you can look at how many of these go with how many of these and figure it out. Anybody remember what this is? I already said the name. Sulfate. Sulfate. Good job. 
And two plus threes have to cancel out with three somethings to give me negative six on this one. So what's the charge have to be on sulfate? Minus two. Minus two. So we got minus two, minus two, minus two, and we're all golden. So the formula is all fine. I already did it for you. Next part of this is what is going on in this reaction? You got a metal all by itself, plain old element, and you got a compound. What's going to happen? Any guesses? Nice, single replacement. So the magnesium, if it's more active, which you can check here, is going to bump aluminum off of the sulfate, and magnesium is going to go with sulfate, and aluminum is going to be out in the cold. How do you know if it really works? Well, you look at your list of metals. Lithium, potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, aluminum. Magnesium's higher, which means it's more reactive. So yes, indeed, it can knock aluminum off of the sulfate. Right on, let's get going. So how is magnesium gonna go with sulfate? Can your neighbor tell them the formula? I put aluminum here, if that's all right. Do you have your brownie packet, Logan? Are you here for that? Uh, yeah, it's just a little different shape. Yes, dear. If we didn't turn it down line, are we going to be off the I know. No. I'm sorry. It's okay. Mg is a plus two. SO4 is a minus two. They go together. One of each, right? You don't do the two and two thing. It's just plus two, minus two, all done. Simplest whole number ratio, right? You don't have to double it, okay? It's like two over two, it's one, okay? So right away, you should figure out that this is not balanced, okay? There's a big problem here going on. I've got one magnesium, one magnesium, that's not a problem, but I've got two aluminums. What do I need to do next? <sighs> Gabby. Mm. Aluminums, how do we fix the aluminum problem? Oh, okay. So, okay. So, Help her out, somebody. What are we going to do? Uh, yeah, what's that big number two called? A coefficient. Good job. So, we got our magnesium's okay, our aluminum's okay. Uh oh. This means this is instead of writing A L A L. <sighs> so. Right? So we got a problem. We've got three sulfates on this side and we only have one over here. How do we fix that? Put a three coefficient. And then you go, row. You gotta add three on the other side. Gotta get one here for the magnesium. Now we're all golden. Okay, we got the right number of pieces on both sides. This is understood to be one. We have ourselves a balanced recipe and we're ready to rock and roll. How many of you have got that on your own? A couple of you, good, okay. So, important to remember about charges that can't go away, <laughs> that has to be up here, okay, and that you don't put a sub three out of parentheses here, okay, because this needs it for the charge, this doesn't need it for the charge, but we still need to have the right number of pieces on both sides, Jack. So the reason it's not AL2 on the, AL squared on the, it's not, there's no squared anywhere. Yeah. Sorry, so sub two. Sub two. Is, is it because it loses? Uh, or? Aluminum's an element when you have atoms of a metal. Okay, there are a few of the nonmetals that are diatomic and tetraatomic and octatomic and all that, but metals don't. They're just individual atoms. Okay. I need two of them here to give away the electrons to the sulfate. But each, this is now not an ion, it's an actual atom. It has all its electrons and protons equal. Okay. Um, 
Next question on there, uh, the next line was to find the molar mass. So finding the molar mass of magnesium, super easy. You look on the periodic table. Okay, hopefully you guys found it was 24.31, 305, which if it goes to the thousands, you know, hundreds is plenty good enough. You can even just do 0.3. I'm just gonna cheat and do 0.3 right now, okay? So that's the molar mass of magnesium. Super simple. You just read the periodic table. This one, not so simple. We're gonna wait on that. <laughs> <laughs> aluminum. What's the molar mass of aluminum? Julia, it's not here. Gwen, 26.98. That's the molar mass for aluminum. How about magnesium sulfate? Aiden, what are we going to have to do? So what's the mass of magnesium? 24.3, the mass of a sulfur, mole of sulfur atoms. 32 point, is it 06 or 07 on your papers? Okay. So I'm just gonna make it one. And there's four oxygens and each oxygen is 16. So if I want the molar mass of that compound, okay. I have to do one of those, one of those, and four of those. That's what the formula tells me. And when you add it all up, 120.4. We're just doing one mole. Okay. Now, some of you are jumping ahead and thinking about multiplying. Okay, we're not doing that yet. We're just finding the molar mass for the, each of these. Oops. <laughs> Oops, I haven't done that before. Each of these substances. All right, now, this one's tricky, right? Two aluminums is two times the 26.98. This means three sulfurs. And this means 12 oxygens. All of those together give us a big fat number. What'd you get for that one? Amani's not here. Anybody? Three forty-two point one four. Okay, I'm gonna go with point one. All right. You guys get that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that looks pretty good to me. And we now have molar mass of magnesium off the periodic table. The molar mass of this compound. The molar mass of aluminum and the molar mass of magnesium sulfate. What two things have to stay the same on a chemical reaction? The number of, the number of molecules don't stay the same. The number of atoms stay the same. Yes, I think so. <laughs> and the number and the mass, the total mass. Now, you can look at this pretty quick and go 24 and 342 is a whole bunch, and it's a lot more than 26 and 120, right? Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. So what's the next thing we got to do to get it to really work out? Multiply by the coefficients, yeah. So 3 times 24.3, 1 times this, 2 times this, 3 times this. That's the next line on the box. And you'll get something close. You may not get exactly these numbers, but I, I have 72.9, yeah. 342.1. I think I used 27 here. Two times this is going to be close to 54. Yeah, I got 53.9. And 320, excuse me, 360 plus 1.2, 361.2. So when you add those up, 415 and change is indeed 415.1 or 0.2 or whatever it comes out to be. Okay, so we do get total mass the same when we include the coefficients. Whew, that's a lot of information. We haven't even gotten to the problem yet. 
<laughs> All right. So you got to know how to make compounds, get to zero charge, write reactions, balance equations, find molar mass. It's a lot of work, huh? But it's not hard. You just have to think in the pieces. All right. So questions on that? Questions from home? Dandy. All right, I'm going to erase all this mess down here. Let's do the problem with... Golly, it's not here. Lauren, would you read number nine, please? Okay, so one of my ingredients... I got 8.4 grams of magnesium. It's like I got two cups of flour. Okay. <laughs> How many grams of aluminum sulfate? How many cups of sugar do I need? Except the cup part is actually the coefficient. So we're going to go from grams. We can't go directly from grams to grams. We have to do a little bit of work along the way. Of course, you know, what are you going to do when you change? What do we have to do? Kais. Um, how do we get from grams to something we can work with? Find the moles. So next thing we're going to do is put moles of magnesium on top, grams per mole, which you already wrote down, 24.3 on the bottom. And then the guy in the video was doing this kind of thing. And we could stop right there and we would have moles of magnesium. And that'd be fine, except that's not what the problem asked for. Next thing we have to do, though, is once we've got moles of one thing, we can change it to moles of the other thing using our recipe. So the mole ratio from the balanced equation of aluminum sulfate to magnesium is one for every three. So you can probably see 8.4, 24. You can see it's probably about a third of a mole. Everybody agree? And one third of that's going to be about a tenth of a mole. You, you can kind of mentally make those adjustments. But you don't have to do anything with that yet. Okay, moles of magnesium cancel moles of magnesium. Now we have moles of aluminum sulfate. But it didn't ask for moles. It asked for grams. And we're going to go ahead and change moles of aluminum sulfate into grams of aluminum sulfate. By multiplying by the molar mass. So remember, changing grams, changing anything into moles is going to require you to divide by something. Changing moles into anything else, you multiply by something. And this one's a big one. This is 342.2. Now, <laughs> this is super easy if you're, think about it with your calculators, okay? This whole thing is one ginormous problem which you can do bit by bit, or you can use parentheses and make your life super easy, okay? You can do little bite-sized problems along the way, or you can do it in one fell swoop. Oops. Okay, so super easy. Everybody got their calculator? Everybody know where the parentheses buttons are? Take your uh, left parentheses, do 8.40, and you can do it times one, times one if you want, just to make it official, 
or you don't have to, since one doesn't change anything, multiply by 342.2. Close the parentheses. Hit the divide button. Do your left parentheses again. 24.3. times three and times one, which you don't have to do. Close it, hit enter. See if your neighbor got the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, did everybody get 39.4? Woo, woo. And you could do it bit by bit and still get the same answer. Anybody not get 39.4? It's actually easy to do because <laughs> if you hit the divide too soon or you don't close the parentheses, it will get confused. I thought that was so you um, times 24 by 3 by 3. What? 24.3 times 3. Yep. So yep. Piece by piece. That's fine. If whatever, do whatever makes sense for your brain. If you want to do it in little chunks, do it that way. It'll still get you the right answer. Okay. So you can do it all at once and it will come out as well. So let's try another one. Any questions from home? Any questions in here? No? Okay. If, so that was seeing if how much of the two reactants I need to pull out of my pantry. The next one is how much product am I going to make? So same amount of magnesium, 8.40 grams. Same thing. What's the first thing we're going to do? Change grams into moles. Good. Haley, I pulled your stick too. This is number 10, right? This is number 10. Okay. The question is asking you how much aluminum will you make so i know how much my ingredient i have how much of my products can i make so this time from the recipe i'm going to put the coefficient for aluminum on top still got the coefficient for magnesium on the bottom and again just to be clear This will give me moles of magnesium. This will give me moles of aluminum. And we don't want moles of aluminum, we want grams of aluminum. So we're going to multiply by the molar mass of aluminum. I'm just going to use 27, if you'll forgive me, being lazy. And it's the same idea. Multiply everything on top together in parentheses. Hit the division button and multiply all the stuff in the denominator. See you tomorrow. Eight point four times one times two times twenty seven. Divided by close parentheses twenty four point three times three. This, this problem is just, just aluminum and the first one is fine for aluminum, so it, okay. Who got 6.22 or 6.2 at least? <laughs> so those are really hard to hit the buttons correctly on. Go ahead and do your 
times two times twenty seven. Close Yep. And then divided by twenty one. Yep. Twenty four point three times three. Close. Enter. Uh -huh. Okay. So you just multiply all these by like. Everything on the top, and you can get the answer if you want to. Okay, and then do everything on the bottom, get the answer, and then just divide those two numbers if you want. Okay, but 6.22 grams of aluminum is what we call the theoretical yield. It's what's supposed to form. But if you remember, it never, ever, ever is going to form. Okay, people lick the spoon, um, it falls on the floor, and doesn't all react. But that value is what should form if you have 8.4 grams of magnesium. Okay. So the last question, number 11, says, suppose you did this and you only got 5.1. You're supposed to get 6.22. Percent yield... Divide those two numbers, multiply by 100. See if your neighbor got the same thing. Bethany, what'd you get? Okay. It depends on how you round it. I got just 81.99 because I used those numbers. 5.10 divided by 6.22. Huh? Yeah. So it'll come out slightly different. So it, basically 82. Everybody good? All right. You always are going to get less than you're supposed to. And we can use that to calculate our percent yield. Yeah, 80% is really high, but it's make believe anyway. Okay, questions? Super. So we're going to stop here. We're not going to do anything else on here. So um, would you please make sure your name's on the front? If you did number eight in the packet, say that right underneath your name. And drop them in the back. Those of you at home, please make sure you submit both number eight and the packet, please. Hey, do you want to put the name that we did number eight? If you did number eight online, let me know. Oh, okay. And I was making waves, my goodness, man. Making waves. Can we turn this thing too? Yes, please. Oh, yes, please. Oh, yes, please. Oh, yes, please. So what's the physics behind it? Well, this is a transverse wave, and the attitude of the wave and the frequency of the wave are the neighborhood. <laughs> How much? I don't know. There is a lot in the world to know. It's kind yeah. of scary, actually. All right, and we got a little bit of time. You were right, Haley. Dang, you're a good girl. Yeah, what a mess. Yuck. Do we need all this to that one? What's it? You're going to need that for the final one. No, no. 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 No
I got two. Oh, wait. No, nope, there's covered. Oh, speaking of under, oh my gosh. Have you guys been to the crepe place in the junction? Oh my gosh, you need to go. It's really good. Crepe place. Yes. It's been there for a long time, but they're only open certain days, like on weekends and stuff. It's weird, but they're also, I think they're the same couple that does the farmer's market crepes too. I'm not sure. Anyway, super yummy. Super yummy. Very reasonable also. Okay, sorry. It's called ADD. <laughs> Squirrel. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, gases just a little tiny bit. We're not going to get very far. I will try and do a little bit more tomorrow. So let's just plunge in here. Those of you at home, there is a note sheet in your um, in your stream. All right. So kinetic. Um, all of you, <laughs> anybody who lives in Tuolumne County has had this smell before. Um, skunk. And even though you're not next to skunk, even though you can't see the skunk. You know when a skunk's been around, and that's because the gases are floating up your nose. Anything, anytime you can smell something, this is kind of gross, but anytime you smell something, that's because little particles of it are going up your nose. <laughs> Ew. I try not to breathe in porta potties, but anyway. All right, so that nose, that smell is coming to your nose because it's traveling on moving particles through the air. There's two main categories of energy. You probably remember this from seventh and eighth grade, kinetic energy and potential energy. Potential energy is the energy of position. It's on here. If you've raised something above the surface of the earth, you give it gravitational potential energy. Chemicals have chemical potential energy in the distance between the atoms and molecules, um, or in the atoms in the molecules um, that that's what you use for fuel for your body. If we've cut the rope, of course, that potential energy gets converted into motion. So kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And when we look at energy, this again is also physics, <laughs> um, potential energy goes straight to kinetic energy if there's no loss due to friction, which in real life there is, of course, but for what we can measure, you know, this would be essentially equal, perfectly equal. So the maximum potential energy means you have the no kinetic energy. Maximum moving energy means you have no potential energy anymore. So y'all have seen these before, little Newton's cradles. Um, if you lift one up, I have to get this level. One goes off because the energy transfers, right? And if I lift two up, I give two of them potential energy. And it's not very balanced because I'm holding it, but you get the idea, right? All that energy transfers. And let's see if I can do this one more time. Oh, it transfers as long as the ropes don't get tangled. So they just pass. The energy passes from particle to particle. And of course, my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughing. laughs> and of course, teachers, science teachers should not be on playground duty. <laughs> It'd be kind of fun, but yeah. ah, so kinetic molecular theory is the explanation we have for how gases are moving around and behaving. KMT. Kinetic has to do with motion. It comes from the French word or the Greek word kinema, which the French made into cinema, which of course is moving pictures, right? If you go to the cinema. Okay, and cinematic stuff has to do with moving pictures. Um, the energy an object has in motion is called kinetic energy. Every particle in the in that you'll ever encounter has some kinetic energy. Every single thing, all the solids, all the bits that are in them, the particles are moving. Wait. Not very far, okay, but they're moving back and forth. Okay, and that's what temperature measures is the average kinetic energy. So this is actually, 
I forgot there were bullets on here. This is actually right in here. The four bullet points are for something else, okay? It's okay if you wrote something there. You can squeeze it in on the other side. So again, <laughs> this makes sense if you think about matter as being made of little particles, okay? Like little BBs moving around. Gas particles are widely separated. Solids, they're touching each other. Liquids, they move over each other. Some assumptions. Particles, matters, little tiny, tiny, tiny spheres with essentially no volume, which of course they have volume because they're matter, okay? But we pretend like they don't and it still works fine. They're in constant straight line motion. So that's Newton's first law, right? Everything keeps moving until it's acted upon by an outside force. Everything's moving in a straight line, not gonna change until something else happens. You know, it's called perfectly elastic collisions, which is a weird physics term also. It just means when they smack into each other, they don't stick together, they bounce off, and all the energy transfers from one to the other. Now these will stop moving because in reality, some of that energy is going to sound and to heat, okay? But we pretend like it doesn't. And then the last piece is there's no force trying to attract particles together. They're moving around like these little BBs in my cookie dish, super fast, hitting each other and changing direction like billiard balls, okay? Pool balls. Um, when they strike each other or the container walls, but they want to keep going straight. Two I'm times sure. it falls apart. Last little thing. Oh no. You guys aren't seeing any of this? Mm -hmm. We can see it like right here, but we can't see it on here. So like the, the people can't see it at home? Shit. <laughs> so dumb with this stuff. It says I'm presenting. It's showing my Google Doc? Yeah. This one? Yeah. yeah. Right now it is. Okay, if I get rid of that. Now it's showing. It's like this. What the heck? Oh, you, mm, I bet I know why, because I picked window because I was getting that big, oh well. All right, so the two places it fails is when it's super, super cold and super, super high pressure, way beyond anything you'll ever encounter, All right? So I'm sorry those of you at home didn't see that. Hopefully I'll figure it out tomorrow. All right, thank you, you've been wonderful. Have a great rest of your day. Such a bummer. Bye. Thank you, Gabby, too.